Hi, and welcome to the Stock Scores Market Minutes for October 27th, 2012. This week's topic less people, more machines. I'm going to explore the effect that fewer investors and more computers have on the market. A reminder to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also to subscribe to my weekly newsletter. It is free, stockscores.com slash newsletters.asp. All right, the market is different these days. I think it's been different since, well, probably about 2007, but it's becoming more and more noticeable as fewer investors play stocks. We find instead that investors are playing exchange traded funds and there has been a rise in computerized trading where the computers are trading the market and taking over many of the strategies that were once executed by human beings. Well the result of that is that there are more whipsaws in the market. We've seen that over the last couple of years where the market one day will look very good only to be followed by a sharp sell-off that can rip out stops and frustrate investors. Well, these whipsaws are caused by the fact that there's just less liquidity in the market. There's less people providing bids when there is weakness because when there's weakness, the computers tend to back away from the market. There's also computers executing the trades faster, which means that new information is priced in very quickly and that causes these quick spikes higher but when this story is over and the computers have executed their trade, well, then the market tends to drift back down. What you need to do in this market is buy weakness and sell strength in strong stocks and short strength and buy weakness in weak stocks. We want to look where the price is in the relative trading channel. Let me show you what I mean, and we can do this both on daily, weekly, even hourly, or charts that update every five minutes. This is a daily chart of a stock that I traded not long ago, Alpha Natural Resources. Now I bought it near the green line when it started to move up in the second week of October. By the third week of October, the stock looked great. It was moving to new highs, but it was also at the top of its price channel. And that's when the sellers, the computers, came out and started to push the stock lower. And in the absence of good liquidity, the market just fell down. Here's another example, Agrium, which has been in a nice upward trend for the last few months, but notice when it gets to the top of that price channel, it gets stuck and it falls down to the lower boundary of that price channel. Now this isn't really anything new, channel trading has been around a long time, but I'm finding it is more important than ever to pay attention to where the price channel is, because if you chase stocks higher, is likely you're going to get whipsawed out of your position on the pullback to the bottom of the channel. All right, let's get into the market analysis for this week. Here's a chart, a weekly chart of the S&P 500 ETF. And you'll all know that we broke the shorter term upward trend line this week. And we are now likely to move down toward the longer term upward trend line, the longer red line that I have on the chart here. So I expect some selling over the next couple of weeks, although in the very short term, it wouldn't surprise me if we see a little bit of a bounce back, but ultimately I think we're going to fall below 140 on this ETF. The Toronto Stock Exchange key ETF, which is XIU representing the TSX 60, has actually held up much better than the US market. And we're seeing that the Canadian market is doing better than its US counterpart. I don't, however, see a good reason to buy the market in general because we are stuck under resistance right now at the red line. Now, if that resistance is broken with a strong move through $18 on the ETF, well, then I think this market goes into a bullish mode. But I'm not holding my breath. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. I am pleased that the Canadian market is holding up better than the U.S. market because it presents opportunities in some of those commodity-based stocks that are US dollar sensitive. The Russell 2000, which is the small cap stocks in the US, has not broken its upward trend line. It could fall a little bit lower before it finds support at the green line. And it feels like money is rotating out of the large caps, the sector of the market that has done well in the US, and is coming back to the small caps, which is really lagged. 
and so I think you will see good trading opportunity in these smaller cap stocks and what's nice about these is many of them are not in the big ETFs and so they don't tend to get pushed around by the computers as much as the larger cap stocks making them easier to trade. The 20 year treasury ETF is an important chart to watch right now because we are testing support at the green line and testing resistance at the red line. If we get a breakout through that red line it implies that money is going back to safety. On the other hand if we break down through the green line it implies that money is leaving the safety of US treasuries and likely to come back to stocks. Now we're at the point of this pattern right now which means we should get a resolution to this pattern in the next week or two and that'll be real important for the market going into year end. We've got to watch this chart very closely. US dollar is in a downward trend. It fell away a little quickly right after quantitative easing round three was announced. We've wound our way back toward the red downward trend line. We're almost there. Then I expect that the US dollar is going to get stuck soon, roll over and start to move lower. That should be supportive for commodities and should actually help stocks as well, at least those denominated in US dollars. But it may take another week or two, which is why I think we could see some more weakness in the US market before it hits support. And at the same time, the US dollar could be strong for another week or two before it hits resistance. Gold is still in that long term upward trend, but really we broke that trend. A few months ago, I felt like it was a good time to short gold. It never fell lower like I expected. And we actually rallied in gold after quantitative easing round three was announced. But notice that we've drifted lower over the last two weeks. The market got stuck at resistance. And right now, at best, I would say the market looks neutral on gold. But it wouldn't surprise me to see it move negative. So I'm on the negative side of neutral with gold right now. Oil has been pretty weak over the last six weeks or so. That's actually supportive for the US economy and really the global economy because cheaper oil is like a tax break in many ways. It gives people more money to spend on other things. We're near support on oil at the green line. So I expect maybe another one or two weeks of weakness in oil before it bounces and then it should start to move up again. Natural gas has been in this upward trend for the last few months. I wouldn't call it a strong upward trend. And now that we've reached the top of that upward sloping channel, it looks to me like we're going to see some short term profit taking in natural gas. But it is encouraging to see that natural gas is finally starting to build some rising bottoms after such a dismal chart for so long. So my outlook then is bearish on US stocks, but not necessarily all US stocks and not necessarily overly bearish. I think that we'll see a short term uh, move down to support before we bounce. Canadian stocks are holding up better than the US, so I've got a neutral rating on those. They're really going to be sensitive to the US dollar. If the US dollar does roll over and move lower, that should be supportive for commodity based markets like the Canadian stock market. Gold, I'm bearish, but I wouldn't say overly bearish. I'm sort of on the bearish side of neutral there. Oil, neutral. I think it could go lower in the very short term, but it's nearing support where it should bounce. Stocks have broken down, but are oversold in the short term. Look for a bounce back in a very short term sense and then a move back down. Canadian markets holding up better than the US. Oil is weak, but nearing support and gold likely to drift lower. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for October 27th, 2012. Have a great week and trade well.